Uh, uh, do you want the blowers going? I'm going to cut them off oh, when we okay. start. Okay. Right. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. Speed. Oh, I didn't tell you. Uh, you know, two shot, right. then go ahead and stay with him the whole time. And don't come back to a two shot until the end. And when I start to wrap it up, then pull back for the two shot. Otherwise, if you want to change on Nick, do it while I'm asking another question. Yeah, we got that out of the way. Yeah. Are we rolling? Speed. Okay. Well, Nick, good morning. Yeah, it is morning. Isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Come on, a movie star like yourself, you're used to starting early. Six, seven? Yeah, you know, but New York stays open all night, so it's... Uh-huh. Uh yeah, they ought to close the town earlier, you know. And then Nick would be more bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. Uh -huh. You look good, though. You look good. Yeah, I feel all right. You have to feel marvelous because the advance reaction to the film, 48 Hours, is just fantastic. Are, you're aware, I guess? Yeah, I, uh, I feel real good about the reaction to it. I saw it finally in a little theater in, in L.A. Uh, with a regular audience, you know, just to see how, instead of seeing it with the industry. Because if you see it with the industry, people are obviously going to tell you it's fine. But the audience reacted real well to it. and. Uh, so it really moves. Walter Hill did a real good job with it. I read, though, that originally you did not want to play this character. Uh, no, I, uh, I had always kind of said to myself that I would never play a cop because, uh, you know, it had been done so much and everybody had played a cop and I just didn't, uh, you know, see any reason to. And I had always considered myself a little bit on the other side of the law, you know. Not, you know, not uh, a criminal or anything, but I, you know, driving down the freeway, I always thought they were after me, you know, <laughs> like we all do, you know. <laughs> so, uh, so I had to, I went up to San Francisco to research, you know, detectives and, and the kind of men they are to uh, clear my own stereotypes, stereotype uh, viewpoint of, of police officers and what they're really up to and what they do. And I was able to do that, you know, I found them, I found a man of great integrity and, uh, and men that are really committed to a certain function in society of, of the protector, you know. So, and then I was able to go ahead and approach the role. Nick, did you have any say so at all about Eddie Murphy being your co-star? No, not really. There were several, several actors presented, you know, and they asked me what I thought, and I said, you know, and I said they all sound fine to me. And and Walter came to New York and talked to Eddie, and uh, that was he felt it was his choice, and and uh, it was a marvelous choice, you know. Who were the other actors? Well, I think they were considering Gregory Hines and the actor from uh, Ragtime. I forget his name now. Uh, you know, but that's that's typical of every film. You know, there's always about five or ten names that are tossed around. You know, and uh, they decided uh, that Eddie was the, the actor to do it. Did you at any time feel that because the way the role is written, I'm talking about Eddie's role, that that you were being, you know, unduly challenged, or that perhaps you would be overshadowed if you didn't watch it? No, you know. It, it, the idea that an actor can steal a scene or a film or something like that is, is, it can't really be done because, you know, in the editing process, it's the director that decides how he wants to balance the scene. If he felt it was overbalanced in one way, he, all he has to do is just cut, out, cut it out. So you really can't steal a scene at all. Um, and so, uh, then uh, the only thing was to build these two roles uh, as a cop and a convict and, and to get those circumstances right and, and, and whatever. No, I didn't. Uh, I was just looking forward to working with Eddie and it was up to us whether we could put that chemistry together, you know. And since we didn't know each other, it, it was a matter of meeting and, and seeing how the chemistry worked and we worked real well together, you know. From the very beginning, did you just, the two of you just get on? Yeah, Eddie has, Eddie has no, no inhibitions and he has no um, ego trip and he, he was quite willing to just dive right in. Even though it was his first film, he just went right past his paranoia and, and didn't, uh, <laughs> you know, didn't pull back or anything. He stayed right in it. So, uh, so it was just a wide open situation, which is a pleasure, you know. 
Nick, it really is amazing, isn't it? He's 21 years old and to have accomplished the success and have the success and fame he has at 21. I just wonder, at, at 21, what were you doing? I was drinking beer. <laughs> Where? Drinking beer and going to different schools and trying to get a hold of some girls, you know. I mean, you know, the normal, normal stuff. But did you have your eyes set on any particular goals, career goals or anything like oh, that? Oh, no, 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 no. No, that's far too young. Far too young, you know. Uh, I, I, I was primarily just trying to have fun, so. Uh, so I, I didn't get serious, or not serious. I didn't find out what I wanted to do until much later. How know. did you know it was acting? Well, I was playing football, and I wasn't good enough to continue with football, so I had to do something, you know. And uh, I saw this, uh, I was in uh, Pasadena City College playing football, and I had a friend that was going to the Pasadena Playhouse. We used to drink in the same bar. One day he said, hey, you know, I go see your football games, why don't you come see what I do? And so I went to the Pasadena Playhouse and saw a play. That's Tom Connolly, Norm he played Norman on Peyton Place. Chris Connolly's his acting name. And I saw that and I thought, well, that's pretty interesting. So that's how I got started. Give yeah. it a shot, huh? Yeah I, got, yeah, I got interested in the process and started to get involved in it. Nick, the last time we talked was for the opening of Cannery Row. Mm. And you got very good notices, but the picture was disappointing at the box office. Do you have any theories on why that, w that turned out that way? Yeah, it was released in Oh, I don't know. I think it was released in maybe a hundred theaters or so for one week and then pulled. You know, it was the last of the Bigelman films to be released under that under that that hunk when Bigelman took over MGM. So uh, they, they just pulled the film. You know, uh, which happens. You know, it, it's happened uh, with Who Will Stop the Rain. It was a similar situation. So if they're not willing to put the effort in to see if it can build an audience or something like that, it's, it's pulled. It's, it's not necessarily of, uh, whether the audience, whether it could have found an audience. It could have found an audience, a limited audience, but it could have found a bigger audience. But they just weren't willing. To, they had run out of money by that time. I think it had spent $250 million and it was all in loss. So they weren't going to spend any money on Cannery Row. We're coming up to Christmas time, Nick, and this is a little story I'm putting together about what famous people would like to have for Christmas if money were no object. Now, it has to be something tangible. I mean, we all want peace and good health and that. But if you could have some one thing, Nick, and money were no object, what would you most like to have? I want a rotor tiller. A rotor tiller? Yeah. For what? Because I want to put my garden in there. So I got to go buy a rotor tiller. Do you have a garden always? Yeah, I have a garden, but you know I haven't had a chance. I, I bought a house, and I haven't had a chance. Uh, I bought it. Oh, I don't know, uh, three, four months ago. No longer than that, five months ago, and I lived there two weeks. You know, I just got back from Mexico about three weeks ago, so I've been there three weeks. So the asparagus patch, I got to cut that down, and I want to put the garden in. So I haven't, and then I ended up in New York. So. So I want to get the rotor tiller. All right, we're making a list and we're going to say Nick Nolte, rotor tiller. Right. Okay? Yeah, Troy built. Uh, Troy built. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Nick, congratulations on a really super performance in 48 hours. I know it's going to be a big hit for you. And uh, have, a, have a good year. Thank you. It's good to good, see you again. Good to see you, Nick. Yeah. <laughs> You sound like my husband. That's my husband wants one of these little Honda things that oh, three the, wheel the things. Oh, three wheeler. I want that too. Oh yeah, he's oh he's God. already. You know, I felt right at home when you said rotor killer. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. This is this. This way. Is it okay? These are these silent bits, aren't they? Uh, no, there will be some sound. Yeah. The first ones will be silent, yeah. Okay. Is that, this a good fix? Yeah. Okay.
<laughs> okay, sound for questions. Nick, I understand that at first you did not want to play this role. Why? What changed your mind about playing this role that originally you weren't too creative? Why did you change your mind then about playing this role? Was there ever a time that you felt you might be overshadowed by Eddie Murphy? Was the chemistry always good between you and Eddie from the very beginning? It really is amazing, isn't it, that Eddie Murphy has achieved so much fame and success at age 21. What were you doing when you were 21? You got very good notices in Cannery Row, but the film was not a hit at the box office. Do you have any theories on why that turned out that way? Nick, if you could have anything in the world for Christmas and money were no object, what would you most like to have? A rototiller? Okay, just one second. Did you have any say-so about the casting of Eddie Murphy? Who were some of the other actors considered? I believe that'll do it, gentlemen. Ask the one about money again. I, I, oh. It didn't sound right to me. Oh, it didn't? Case, oh, okay. Thanks. Um, it made all me right. fine. Just try. Okay. Nick, if you could have anything in the world and money were no object, what would you most like to have for Christmas? <laughs> okay, that should do it. Who was the actor? Is that showing? That's right. Waste. Yeah, okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, questions? Nick, I understand originally you did not like this character. Why did you change your mind about doing this role? Did you have any say-so about the casting of Eddie Murphy? Who were some of the other actors? Who were some of the other actors? From the very beginning, was there always this wonderful chemistry between you two? 
Steve, did you ever wonder or worry that maybe the way the role is written for Eddie Murphy, that maybe you were in competition or even would be overshadowed by him? Did you ever worry that perhaps Eddie Murphy's role would overshadow yours? Nick, you got very good notices for Cannery Row, but it was not a hit at the box office. Why do you think? Nick, if you could have anything in the world for Christmas, what would you most like to have? Okay, just one second, let me check. Isn't it amazing that Eddie Murphy has such amazing success and he's only 21 years old? Nick, what were you doing when you were 21? <laughs> when did the acting come along? Okay. Okay, that should do it. And I thank you all for very